I think we're right at two. I have one clock says 159, but I'm pretty sure it's a little bit behind. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hello and thank you to everybody for coming to my very first Facebook Live video while I participate with over 50 other designers as we do a virtual Quilters Candy Trunk Show for you as we all stay safe at home right now. There have been so many different trunk shows. They've all been wonderful and there's still two more days of beauty to come, so stay tuned. And if you go to the top of my Nestlings by Robin Facebook page, the pinned post has a blog link that'll take you to the list of everybody that has participated from April 1st all the way up to April 10th. So I was really excited because I thought today would be my magic mirror day, but alas, I cannot read the comments that are coming in on my little tiny phone across the room from me. So I do hope that you will comment and ask questions in the feed as we go along. And when this is all done, I promise to go back and read them and answer any questions you may have. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin Kaler. I am the owner of Nestlings by Robin. I have been quilting for 20 years now. I learned to quilt when we were stationed overseas in Puerto Rico. Another Coast Guard spouse taught me how. And for, 20, for 15 of those 20 years, I have been designing and I have owned Nestlings by Robin. One of the questions I get quite a bit is, why Nestlings? And I think the very obvious reason is my name is Robin. And so I thought Nestlings by Robin would help people remember the name a little better. But it has some other personal meanings to me. And one of them being because we were in the Coast Guard for 30 years, I have nested many, many homes. And um, it, it just gives that feeling of every time you go in, you're re repurposing things, redesigning rooms, and the other reason is, is that over those years, we raised two beautiful daughters and many times I called them my little chickies. So nestlings has a lot of meaning to me and I hope it's easy to remember. So nestlings by Robin doesn't just design quilts. I also offer hand quilting services and I am also an AQS certified quilt appraiser. And so because of all the many hats that I wear in this business, it was really hard to narrow it down to just a select group of favorite quilts for me to share with you today. And in that favorite quilt range, there will be a range of quilts because you can see with all the different hats I wear, I'm going to have a little bit of everything. But let's start at the very beginning, which was pattern designing. I have, I believe, whew, 70 plus patterns. Some of those have been discontinued now and I have maybe close to 20 magazine designs, um, designs with connecting threads catalog as well. Lots of applique because that's my passion, but I also like to refer to myself as the ADD quilter because when you go to my site, you'll see there's regular piecing, paper piecing, embroidery, uh, miniature quilts, large quilts. I like it all, I can't say, but applique is the one thing that I am truly passionate about. And so, if you go to my website, nestlingsbyrobin.com, this is what the patterns look like. And we're gonna start with this one. This one is the one that is directly behind me. And the name of this quilt is Las Flores de Amigas, which translates to Flowers of Friends. And it was named that because my sweet friend Susan, one year for my birthday, gifted me a fat quarter collection of quite a few of the fabrics. I had to add some of the prints, but for the most part, it was a fat quarter collection. And as soon as I saw the fat quarter collection, I knew immediately what this design was gonna be. It popped into my head. I was very fortunate that way. And not only has this become my logo quilt for the business, but I was also fortunate enough to have it juried into Paducah in 2007. And it was also juried into the Mancuso Mid-Atlantic show in Hampton, Virginia one year. So it has a special place in my heart, as they all do, but this one. Okay, next. 
let's talk about this beauty. This beauty here is called Heartbursts, and it started as a 12 inch block that was submitted to Quilt Makers 100 Quilt Block magazine that they had a few years back. And then when that magazine became really popular, they decided to branch out and do a magazine called Quilts from 100 Blocks. And so I submitted this entire quilt and it was published in, I don't know, spring of 2016 maybe. But right now, since I have the copyright back, it is now a pattern on my website. And again, the name of it is Heartbursts. So you can see lots of red and green applique, which I absolutely adore. My patterns are written for fusible applique though, since that seems to be what most people prefer. And that's fine, applique any way you like. So for a few years, probably a handful of years um, in the industry, I would vend at International Quilt Market, which is business to business. It's the wholesale side of things. And when we would have our booth, I would try to come up with some sort of theme. So one year we did, one year I did baby quilts. And if you go to my website, there's a page called Nestled Babies and it has baby quilt patterns on it. One year I did a whole booth in pumpkins because I absolutely love pumpkins. And if you are an AQS member and you got the magazine last fall, there was a white pumpkin design in it called Winterkin, that was me. And then one year I did all tulips because I love tulips. So this here is called Tulip Pinwheel. I don't know about you, but I feel the pinwheel block is timeless, as timeless as tulips are. And they just went really, really well together. And you can see that it has a very nice stylized tulip block in it. And I really feel that the tulip quilts that I'm gonna show you here today, and the ones that are in those patterns, really portrayed what I like to refer to as my whimsical traditional style. I really like to combine applique with piecing, some embroidery, they're whimsical because I might you know, tweak the flowers and make them something different than what we think of they normally look like, but they're traditional in their settings and how I add some of the piecing to them. So here we have, and it might not all make it into the camera because it's so big. This one is called Tulip Flourish. And what I really loved about this, other than playing with the oversized blocks, was that within the stylized version of a tulip petal, the white area that you're seeing here in the smaller area has a bunch of embroidered tulips in it as well. So you get embroidery and applique. This is one of the first really large quilts that I quilted myself on my home machine. Can't say I really loved it, but I do love how it turned out. It really is really, really pretty in my own opinion. So doing some of that, I'll show you that we also did one. This one's called Tulip Star. This was part of that booth that year as well. The year that we did pumpkins, we had Pumpkin Star. And if you really love embroidery, this one was called Pumpkin Trellis. You can see it's a stylized pumpkin with a trellis and lots of embroidered flowers. Really fun to do, mindless stitching. Once it's traced on, good tip for tracing multiple colors is to use um, colored pencils so that you get reminded to change colors when you're supposed to. And it's just nice, you just sit mindlessly stitch away while you watch your favorite movies. Okay. So, next up, hopefully my poor rack will hold the weight. In case you missed it, in 2018, I was very honored to be a part of AQ Magazine's magazine, the series quilt that they do. And so this started in 2018 and it ran for five issues and it's called Robin's Reefs. 
it's just probably one of my absolute favorites. It has a very traditional feel to it, but yet all the flowers inside the wreaths are whimsical and they're my own little take on things. The background is pieced in different fabrics, but all in the same colorway, so you get that monotone feel, but it has a little movement to it. Just love, love, love this one. This pattern, now the copyrights come back to me, will be published this summer by me. It'll be on my website. It'll include lots of little tips and stuff that unfortunately magazines don't always have the space to publish. And it'll also include instructions on how to do this darling, darling little miniature all in embroidery. So stay tuned for that. The other thing is, is that this is now a three hour class. We work on this block right here, the hearts and bloom block. If your guild really loves handwork, it's going to be a hand applique where I teach you my tips on how I create vines, how I attach the vines, how I do needle turn applique. It's so much easier than people think and so relaxing. So this past year, it felt like I was in so many more magazines than I could keep up with. And I have more coming out this year in 2020, so keep an eye out for me. I'll just show you the two most recent real quick. This one is called Where Love Grows. It was in Quilt Mania's Simply Modern magazine. If you like paper piecing and applique, here you go. For those of you who just love straight old piecing, out of my box colorway for sure. And this is with annies.com. They have a new book called Twist and Turn Block Quilts. And this is called Beach Glass. So during my becoming a quilt appraiser, I really fell in love with antique quilts. And so this is one of the very first ones I ever purchased. It's called Cox Combs and Currents. That'll be important in a little while. And I have a lecture called Well-Loved Ladies where we look at applique quilt, red and green applique quilts from the 19th century. And I'm gonna be taking blocks of all of those and putting them into a block of the month starting this summer. And I hope you'll be able to come along for the ride. The quilting, oh my goodness. Look, 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 look at the quilting on this. This isn't typically red and green, but it's the first time I'm showing it to anybody. It's new to me. The quilting is gorgeous, and it's a Carolina Lily variation. And so it'll end up in the lecture just so that we can talk about variations of design. Okay, lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about my classes that I teach because I'm hoping some of you watching today will uh, go back to your guild chairs and say, oh, please bring her along, she's so much fun. And when you go to the website, there's a lecture workshop page with a lot of choices for a little bit of everything for everybody. But I'm gonna show you some of the few things that I'm excited about. One of them being miniatures, love miniatures. Paper pieced miniatures are my favorite because they're easy to make sure they turn out nice and mounting them to canvases because they sit nicely on a shelf, they're quick, they're easy, and they give a little depth. Another one of my classes that I'm very excited about is called Fabric Collaborations. We all have beautiful fabrics in our rooms. They all have lovely prints. We chose them for a specific reason. And in a six hour class, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna learn how to collaborate with the fabric designer to create a small piece that is unique to you. So for example, this quilt was on the cover of Simply Vintage last summer. The block that is in here is a circa 1880 block and it has lots of little flowers in there. And I looked at all the little flowers and I thought, how could I pull those out and make them into something new just for me? And this is Romantique. And in the class, I teach you some drawing hacks, all kinds of fun things. It's so much easier than you think. And it's like kindergarten class. We go, we play all day and we have so much fun. 
and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of a few of the blocks that are going to be in the block of the month this summer. I know this looks really difficult, but remember you don't have to hand applique. See, there's that coxcomb back again. Ooh, we got an oak leaf design, lots of roses, beautiful, beautiful red and green blocks, but you don't have to do them in red and green either. You can do them in any color way you want and you can fuse them if you want to. So, starting to run out of time, here we go. Please sign up for my newsletter. You can go to my website, nestlingsbyrobin.com. When the little pop-up window shows up, follow the prompts. And along there, you'll get updates for the block of the month that's coming, new patterns that are coming out, new classes that'll be out next year. I have a new living history series that'll be coming out in 2021. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me and all my fellow designers. We appreciate your support today and every day.